All right, get ready to dive deep because today we're becoming Arinto experts. We're going to uncover all the secrets of this Portuguese grape. And let me tell you, it's a story full of surprises. That's right. We're talking royal connections, ancient vineyards, and a grape that's basically a time traveler in a bottle. I love that, a time traveler. Yeah. Okay, so first things first. This grape has a secret, right? Like a double life. Tell me more about this whole Pedernum thing. It's true. In some parts of Portugal, Arinto actually goes by the name Pedernum. Same grape, different name. It's kind of like a wine world alias. Okay, that's kind of cool, but why the different names? It all goes back to terroir, which is a fancy way of saying where the grape is grown. Arinto or Pedernum is very sensitive to its environment. You keep saying terroir, but break it down for me. Why does it matter so much for this grape? Okay, so imagine this. You have two glasses of Arinto. One is from the Bucillus region, known for its clay limestone soils, and it's bursting with citrus and this really distinct minerality, I think lime zest and a hint of sea salt. The other is from Alentejo, a warmer, drier region. This Arinto is going to be richer, maybe some peach or apricot notes, even a touch of spice. Wow. Okay, so same grape, totally different experience depending on where it's grown. Exactly. That's the power of terroir. It shapes the grape's personality. So we've got these two regions, but I'm guessing Arinto is grown all over Portugal. You got it. It's like Arinto went on a grand tour of Portugal, putting down roots in Vinho Verde, Barada, Tejo. Each region brings out a totally different side to this grape. That's pretty cool. Speaking of cool, the research had mentioned something about Arinto being enjoyed by royalty. Now, that's a story I got to hear. Oh, absolutely. We're talking about King George III of England, no less. Uh. Back in the 17th and 18th centuries, these wines, especially from the Bruxelles region, were famous for aging incredibly well. So they could cellar these wines for decades and they'd still be delicious. Exactly. That kind of quality made them incredibly sought after. Even royalty couldn't resist. These wines were shipped all over Europe. Wow. So I could be sipping the same grape as a king. You got it. It's like a taste of history, right? Uh. And speaking of history, Arinto has seen a lot of it. Remember the phylloxera epidemic that nearly wiped out European vineyards in the 19th century? Oh, right. The Great Grape Plague. What a nightmare for winemakers. It was devastating. But Arinto, resilient as ever, bounced back. Wine growers replanted entire vineyards with resistant rootstock. It was a huge undertaking, but they rebuilt what had been lost. Can you imagine a world without Orinto now? I don't even want to think about it. This grape has truly stood the test of time, from royal courts to near extinction. But that brings up a question, where does Orinto go from here, especially with climate change and all? That's where things get even more interesting. Because while Orinto's roots are firmly planted in Portugal, its future might look a little different, a little more international. International Orinto. Okay, now you've got my attention. Where is this Portuguese grape going global? Well, let's start with South Africa. Stellenbosch and Sortland, to be exact. These regions have this Mediterranean climate similar to parts of Portugal. And the soil, granitic, it's like they rolled out the red carpet for Arinto. And are winemakers there actually having success with it? Oh, yeah. They're producing some really exciting wines. You still get that classic Arinto freshness, but with a unique South African twist. I love that a fusion of styles. So yeah. that's South Africa. Anywhere else embracing the Arinto wave? Oh, absolutely. Keep your eye on the United States. Really? We're the U.S. California and Oregon, those winemakers love to experiment, and they're realizing just how much potential Arinto has. That's really cool. So we've got South Africa, the U.S., anyone else joining the Arinto party? You can't forget about Australia. McLaren Vale, Adelaide Hills, those regions are becoming Arinto hotspots. So Arinto is going global. That's amazing. But what about climate change? You mentioned earlier how sensitive this grape is to its environment. Won't that be a problem? Climate change is a huge challenge for all grape growers. And Arinto, with its very specific needs, is definitely vulnerable. So how do you grow a grape that's so sensitive to its environment when the environment is changing so rapidly? That's the million dollar question. But winemakers are a resourceful bunch. They're already experimenting with different techniques to adapt to the changing climate. Like what? What are they doing? Well, one thing they're doing is focusing on canopy management. Canopy management. Yeah, it's basically how they prune and train the vines to control how much sunlight reaches the grapes. More shade means the grapes ripen slower, and that helps to preserve acidity, which is crucial for Arinto. Fascinating. It's like they're engineering a way for the grapes to thrive in warmer temperatures. Are there other techniques they're using? They're also looking into different rootstocks. Some rootstocks are more drought tolerant, which is essential as some regions get drier. 
It's like giving the Urinto vines superpowers to withstand tougher conditions. That's amazing. It sounds like they're pulling out all the stops to protect this grape. They are. And, you know, this is actually part of why we're seeing Orinto planted in new regions. Winemakers are trying to stay ahead of climate change, finding cooler climates or higher altitudes where Orinto can really flourish. So even with all the challenges, it sounds like Orinto has a bright future ahead of it. Absolutely. And, you know, it makes me think about how resilient this grape really is. It's survived for centuries. It's adapted to different terroirs. And now it's taking on climate change. It really is a survivor. Yeah. So. For those of us who want to get to know Orinto better, what should we be looking for? That's a great question. There are a few things to keep in mind if you want to become a true Orinto aficionado. Okay, lay it on me. Yeah. How do we become Orinto experts? All right. First things first, don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone, you know. <laughs> we talked about those classic Orinto regions in Portugal, but there are so many hidden gems out there. So be adventurous. I like it. But where do we even start? Think back to our conversation about terroir. Remember how those granitic soils, the clay limestone, they give Orinto that almost salty mineral edge? Yeah, yeah. If that kind of complexity gets your taste buds going, seek out wines from those regions. It's like you can practically taste the earth where the grapes are grown. Exactly. <laughs> and don't forget about climate. Orinto likes it just right. Not too hot, not too cold. Cooler climates, those are your go-tos for that super crisp, citrusy Orinto. But if you're in the mood for something a little bolder, a little richer, check out bottles from warmer regions. So it's all about matching your mood to the climate. That's a good tip. And, you know, don't be shy about asking for recommendations. Your local wine shop, they're a goldmine of information. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes it feels intimidating, you know, talking about wine, but everyone starts somewhere, right? 100 percent. The best part about wine is there's always something new to discover. So ask questions, try new things, and most importantly, enjoy the journey. I love that. Enjoy the journey. Well, there you have it, folks. Everything you need to know about Orinto. It's a grape that's been enjoyed for centuries, and with its resilience and adaptability, it's clear that Orinto is here to stay. It really is remarkable. From its home in Portugal to vineyards across the globe, Orinto proves that great wine is a testament to tradition, to the artistry of winemaking, and to a little bit of adventure. Could have said it better myself. Yeah. So next time you're looking for a wine that's as refreshing as it is intriguing, as food-friendly as it is age-worthy, give our end to a try. Trust us, you won't regret it. Cheers to that. Until next time, happy exploring.